We're going to talk about um, the nature of charge in terms of the parts of the atom and then the actual true charge of protons and electrons and how we can determine what the total charge is based on that number of protons and electrons. So first, parts of the atom. I know we've probably seen this multiple, multiple years in a row, but it's always good to discuss it again. So inside of the nucleus are protons. and neutrons. Okay. And so there we go. We have protons. These are positive charge. And then we have neutrons, which are neutral or no charge. Let's see. No, no charge. <clears throat> Both of these are in the nucleus. The thing about the nucleus is it is so tightly bound that it is extremely difficult in order to break it apart. And so the nucleus for all intents and purposes, especially with charging, does not change. You cannot change the number of protons and neutrons easily. The only way you can is with a nuclear reaction. We're talking like atom bomb style. So rubbing a balloon on your head is not the same as an atom bomb. So you cannot change the number of protons in an object when it comes to charging it. Around the outside are teeny tiny little particles called electrons. And they are spinning around super fast. And these are negatively charged. And since they are spinning around in the electron cloud, they can be moved. So can transfer, move, change. I mean, you can imagine with all of these little things like flying around on the outside, if you were to bring a balloon in, you could imagine that it would be really easy to move those little negatives off. Now you can't get rid of that clump that is that nucleus, but these things are just spinning around outside anyway. Yeah, you can knock them off. Wouldn't be too hard. And so the only way that you can charge an object is by changing the number of electrons. All right. So to make an object positively charged, to make what you have to do is you have to remove electrons. What you need to end up with in the end is more protons than electrons. Well, since we said you can't move and you can't change the number of protons, then that means you have to get rid of electrons for there to be an excess or extra protons in the object. And then to make something negative, you need to add electrons. There needs to be extra electrons, excess electrons in an object. And so the only way to do that, we can't get rid of protons. So we need to add electrons. For something to be neutral, the 
there are equal numbers of protons and electrons. So for every proton, there is one electron if it is neutral. Now, let's actually quantify this. Charges of particles. In an equation, charge has the variable Q. It can either be capital Q or lowercase Q. It doesn't matter. Q is Q, which is charge. The unit of charge is the Coulomb, named after a guy named Coulomb who came up with this idea of quantifying charge. Coulomb is written as capital C. The capital is because it's a proper name. So in an equation, it'll be Q, and as a unit, it will be capital C for charge. A lot of times when I start doing examples and everything, I'll mispronounce Coulomb as Coulomb. That way to help emphasize that Q is for charge. So the proton, the proton we know has a positive charge. Well, how much positive charge? I like using the capital, so I will. But again, if you see lowercase, it's the same thing. So we're going to say QP. So the charge of a proton is equal to positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. An electron, QE, will be the exact same charge, but negative. So negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now notice that this negative means that it is a negative charge. And the negative 19 means very small. For the proton, it's the same thing. This positive in front of the 1.6 means that it is a positive charge. And this negative 19 means it is still very small. Remember, they have to be the same. If we were to write this out, speaking of very small, it would be zero point. Here we go, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen coulombs. That is extremely small. So what we should note about this is whenever we build a charge on something, so like whenever our hair stands up because of pulling on or off a sweater, or whenever we rub a balloon on our head and our hair stands up, it means we need a bunch of these things. I mean, a crazy number of them, right? Because each one has this itty bitty tiny amount of charge so to even get close to being able to feel something we need like millions or billions of these electrons or protons so speaking of how do we figure out the total charge and how do we figure out how um how many electrons or protons there are so this says, what is the total charge of 4 times 10 to the 15 electrons? Well, what we know, the electrons, so let me go back to blue here. We know that one electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. We have this many of them. So how do we figure out the total? 
Well, if we had one of them, the answer would be this. If we had two of them, it would be this number times two. If we had a hundred of them, it would be this number times a hundred. So in other words, the total charge is equal to the charge of one electron times the number of electrons. So one electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And we have not 2, 10, or 100, but 4 times 10 to the 15 electrons. So we multiply these two things together, and we get our total charge. Now let's go to the calculator. Open parentheses. Negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, close parentheses, times 4 times 10 to the 15. Okay. To the 15 close parentheses and we hit enter and we get negative 0 0.00064 negative 0 0.00064 coulombs now if you're using a graphing calculator this will probably give you the answer in scientific notation so we'll put or negative 6.4 times 10 to the negative 4 coulombs. So which one is correct? The correct one is the one your calculator gives you. Just write it down. All right, now let's figure out how many extra protons are in 5 coulombs. So now, let's see, protons, here we go. So now I know the total charge. The total is five coulombs. I know that the charge of one proton is positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So the question is, is how many protons are in five? Well, one proton is this much. This is our total. And so the question is, is how many of these will fit in this? Well, we would divide it. If we were to use this one, we would get the exact same answer. So Q total would be QP times the number of protons. So our total is 5. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times the number of protons. And so we would divide. Before I put it in the calculator, if 1 is this teeny tiny number and we have a total of 5, we can imagine it's going to be a large number. There's going to be a ton of these 1.6s in that 5 number. So let's do it. 5 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. That is a lot. 3.125 times 10 to the positive 19. 3.125 times 10 to the 19 protons. And that's how you do it.